I'm Im Diamonds, uh, principal software engineer at Red Hat. We're working on Pipewire. Um, yeah, so this is a, a little overview <clears throat> uh, about what happened. So for those who don't know what Pipewire is, it's uh, it well, it started a long time ago and it went through a lot of things. But uh, currently it's a multimedia sharing and processing engine. So, um, yeah, so what do we do with it? I'll tell you later. So, but it's in Fedora since, uh, since Fedora 34. Um, well, it was in there before for screen sharing, but it's in Fedora 34 for uh, as an audio server, <clears throat> uh, replacing Pulse Audio. Uh, so it has compatibility with Pulse Audio, but it also combines uh, the features of Jack. So it's basically a, a consolidation of pro and consumer audio into one audio server. Um, so pro cases usually are like lower latency, more flexible routing of, of application sound. <clears throat> um, but consumer audio usually needs something like um, better plug and play of hardware, easier integration with everything. Um, so it also does video and MIDI. Uh, so basically anything multimedia, but we are mostly doing uh, audio actually now and some video for the screen sharing, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. so briefly, I mean, I don't have a lot of time, uh, but Pipewire basically is a daemon <clears throat> that connects or interconnects applications uh, on one side, so you can have applications talk to each other, but you can also have applications talk to <clears throat> hardware uh, and exchange multimedia. So you can send audio around and video frames around and stuff like that. But you can also do, it's graph based, so you can build all kinds of filters and a complete processing graph kind of thing. So you can split signals and merge signals together and all of these things. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the way in the current state of affairs is that there is a daemon. <clears throat> we have um, a pipe wire pulse process that is running that is basically emulating a pulse audio server on top of pipe wire, uh, basically serving all of the uh, well, legacy, I guess, uh, pulse audio applications, not really legacy because we don't really plan to change them. Um, uh, but now you can also run pro audio apps. So typically uh, using libjack, <clears throat> um, for which you would need a different Jack server to run those. You can all run those with a, a Pipewire replacement libjack on top of Pipewire. And there's also an also plugin to run legacy. I don't know if it's called legacy, but applications using the Alza API on top of Pipewire as well. Uh, and there's also a session manager running. So uh, I'll talk more about that uh, in a minute. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, modular and so on. Um, yeah, so uh, it's written to be very performance. You will copy all of the good things, but also all of the modern uh, Linux stuff like MemFD, DMA buff for screen sharing. Event FDs for waking up uh, processes and threats. <clears throat> uh, it has a security built in. Um, yeah, so it needs an external session manager that implements policy. And I'll talk more about that later for what we did um, in, since the latest Fedoras. So in Fedora 34, um, the current state is that it's fairly up to date the pipeline releases but we stopped at this version because of dependencies and because of yeah um so since the release in 34 there was there were many things missing if you saw the 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 talk then i listed them all on a slide but since then they're mostly all implemented so the, the lots of stuff the network stuff echo cancellation latency compensation, freewheeling for Jack apps. It's, 
in in the course of Fedora 34, they got implemented and gradually you got those in Fedora. So um, in Fedora 35 and 36, they, um, we actually changed uh, the session manager to Wire Plumber. And Fedora 36 is basically a continuation of 35. The versions are exactly the same uh, as of now. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so what changed since uh, Fedora 34? The big change was really the session manager, which is now a wire plumber. Uh, so exactly what does a session manager do? Um, yeah, so usually Pipewire is just a blank canvas. There's nothing there. Um, it only provides a way for applications to share data, but there are no applications and there are no uh, devices usually. It's the task of the session manager to actually um, load the devices into Pipewire, configure them uh, and all of those things. Like Bluetooth, for example, is for DBus, uh, generate the Bluetooth devices, do the security, decide what the application can access and not. Um, also decide uh, where applications get routed to and how that works. Uh, do they get passed through or not? Do they get channels remixed and all of these things? Uh, and also saving and loading of settings. So actually the session manager is uh, one, one of the most important parts of uh, Pipewire actually. Um, and we replaced it now with uh, something that was less of a temporary hack that we put in Fedora 34. Um, so the, uh, the wire plumber itself is uh, a bit more extensible and, and, and actually a bit more modern. So it uses genome, GNOME technology, so it'd be better integrated in everything. You get bindings. Um, it's also scriptable with uh, an embedded Lua engine. So we, we write most of the rules and all of the, the, the stuff in, um, in Lua, which is nice, uh, better than writing it in C. Um, so you can actually just swap out a bunch of scripts or making small changes to scripts um, to, to write some custom rules, which is quite nice. Uh, it's a lot easier to write and, and it doesn't crash uh, as easily because it's a scripting language. Uh, so, yeah. um, so other things except for wire plumber, there's a little bit of a problem currently in wire plumber. You can't use Pulse Audio anymore. You used to be able to switch out uh, the audio stuff <clears throat> back to Pulse Audio, but wire plumber uh, grabs all the audio devices and you can't really run this anymore. Uh, we're figuring that out. Um, yeah. So other than that, what's new in Pipewire? Um, I'm sorry, I have to stop this here. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So we, we did, did a lot of things, actually. Most of the stuff for uh, Pro Audio to make that integrate better. So you get lots of settings to change runtime things like buffer size, sample rates. Uh, there's also a sample rate switching now. So you can make a list of all the allowed sample rates that you want to use. And then it can switch between these things. Um, a bit like Pulse Audio, but Pulse Audio only had two. Here you have uh, 32, I think. Um, so yeah, we also have config fragments. So you used to be able to configure things by copying a whole config file and then changing it. Now you can just make, for example, if you want to change the sample rate, just make a little fragment in a directory and these things will be merged with the main config file. So people that problems, things got upgraded, the config file changed and they didn't get the changes because they had a complete copy of an old version. So that's not necessary anymore. Um, yeah, some of the sound processing, processing got uh, improved. So we actually now do up mixing by default. Um, it's a little bit controversial, perhaps. Um, so what that means is if you have a laptop that um, 
has four speakers, which is some newer laptops. They actually have a subwoofer. Um, uh, we will actually generate upmix uh, the, the subwoofer channel, a low frequency channel, and sometimes also a front channel. Um, because it's better than just leaving this, the, the speakers without sound, I think. Um, there's also an upmix algorithm for 5.1. The reason, again, is if you set your hardware device to, to surround, um, I think you, you expect to have surround sound. Uh, yeah. You can disable this, but by default, this is uh, something we do. Um, yeah, a little bit of improved stuff all over the map. Um, we also got something that we don't know exactly what to do with it yet, but it's there, um, which is called filter chains. So you can build filters, <clears throat> arbitrary complex using existing lots of filters or built-in filters um, that you can place in front of uh, other things. Like for example, things for virtual surround or like an equalizer specifically tuned for your headphones or things like that. Um, you can build these now. Um, or like, for example, noise cancelling uh, is something easily doable. Um, well, one of the plans is perhaps to automatically generate these things based on what kind of hardware you have or um, perhaps have config panels where you can say, I want to enable noise cancelling on this microphone, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of fun, these filter chains. Um, so you can just run something like this, um, a pipedrive process with a config file, which basically lists the, the chain of filters that you want to run. It creates these things in the pipedrive graph and you can directly use it. Um, so you can start a bunch of those, you can make a, a, a a system D script to start these automatically, or you can do all kinds of crazy stuff in the session manager. Experimental, we don't really have anything hooked up automatically, but it's future. Um, so yeah, echo cancellation uh, as well. So echo cancellation is for if I speak in my microphone, it goes uh, through the internet to somebody who's listening. And then that signal actually gets captured by the microphone of that user and then gets sent back to me. So it's very annoying because I hear myself talking with a certain delay. So on the receiver side, if you run an echo canceller, it will filter out the sound that comes out of this microphone and goes into this, uh, comes out of the speaker and goes into this microphone so that this echo doesn't happen for the, the speaker. So it's a module that you can now load and do this using uh, a WebRTC, the same as in Pulse Audio, really. Um, yeah. So Bluetooth, um, we have uh, one of the best Bluetooth stacks now uh, with the most features. Um, so we've got almost all of the codecs that you can have. Uh, we also have automatic switch now. So if a phone call comes in on a browser, we can switch to the, the bidirectional uh, profile of your Bluetooth headset. And we can switch back when uh, the phone call ends. Uh, we also have some codecs in separate modules because some codecs are uh, patent, patented or have an unclear license, so we can ship them separately. So, for example, Aptex is uh, in RPM Fusion, not standard in Fedora. The other ones are, no. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, pass-through was also missing. Something we, we, um, we have also is pass-through of DSD. So DSD is um, um, a high uh, quality, or high fidelity format. Um, there's actually no native player for BSD. Um, the, there's a program DSD play in PyPyre. It's the only one on Linux that I know uh, to play native DSD. Uh, 
Uh, and then the usual pass-through. Some of the other pass-through formats actually don't work yet. I don't know why. Um, yeah, so lots of stuff for Jack, much more stable. Uh, probably uh, you can call it usable now. Um, everything is implemented as far as I know. Um, you can do all kinds of fancy stuff, changing buffer sizes and sample rates on the fly, but you probably don't want to do that very often. Um, yeah, so starting to move to lip camera. So this is also for future fedoras. So currently all of the camera stuff, so in this browser, for example, this camera is using a uh, video for Linux. The, the API directly, IOCTLs. Um, so sharing cameras and stuff like that doesn't really work yet. Uh, we, move, we need to move all the browsers over to Pipewire. And then we actually also need to use uh, a new library, Lip Camera, to access the cameras, not directly using the IOCTLs, because cameras are getting a bit more complicated and needs it needs a little bit of framework. So we're having a hackfest in two weeks where we will talk about how we can do this. Uh, so this is probably something for the future, the near future. Uh, there's a little hack, PWV for L2, that intercepts all ICTLs. And you can run sort of Firefox on top of Pipewire using the, the camera. Uh, but it doesn't work with everything. There are other ways of doing this, but the question is, do we want to pursue this hack or do we want to just port apps over to PyPyre? We'll see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So screen sharing, uh, improved negotiation of DMA buffers. So screen sharing now is pretty much zero copy if you have all the right uh, components in the compositor, uh, yeah, newer Pipewire version and in the browsers, and you actually just transfer the MA buffs. You can negotiate the, the kind of uh, layout of the buffer so that you can use an optimal format for the hardware, stuff like that. So there's an in incremental negotiation. Um, you can get a couple of DMA buffs, say, I don't like them. You can renegotiate the new set and so on until you find something that you can agree on. And then you can stream in the most efficient format. So like, for example, things like OBS use this. Um, you can actually now play a game uh, and have it record screen with minimal lag, zero copy. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's some other things in there for headless compositors, so where um, if you do remote access and a client um, can ask for the compositor for new frames based on the frame rate of the client. So there's like a, a pool mechanism for these, uh, for screen sharing as well. Um, so that's all pretty cool. There's another, another mechanism where the compositor can notify a client when something has changed. So we've been adding a little bit of new stuff there. Um, yeah, so network support is also uh, mostly implemented. So for low latency, reliable streaming over RTP and UDP, we recommend Rock. It's pretty good. It works well. Um, then there's also the native Pulse Audio streaming that, uh, that works well. Uh, and that people were using before, so that works too. Um, and yeah, some some support for Apple AirPlay. Uh, you also have the Bluetooth streaming, of course, but these are the main new things that uh, were implemented. Um, yeah, <clears throat> we finally made Zoom work. Not so easy. Uh, so Zoom was using the Pulse Audio API to set up a whole bunch of virtual devices uh, to capture microphones and to route audio around. Um, and we had to reverse engineer that a little bit to understand what it was doing and what, what it was expecting. Uh, it also needed a bit of quirks because it didn't like some of the properties on devices and things like that. So, but I think it should now 
finally work. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that's most of the things that we did. So what's next? <clears throat> so um, uh, audio portal is one of the things that we are we should start looking at. So right now the situation is that uh, we are starting to ship flat packs with uh, Jack applications like Ardour, for example, because they can use the Pipewire Jack library to go out of the uh, the sandbox and do audio stuff. Uh, but this is all not very uh, controlled. Uh, what we want there is we want to put a portal there and we want to say to the users, just like when you share your screen, we want to pop up a dialogue. This application want to access your audio uh, hardware. Usually the problem is for capturing hardware because you capturing audio because you don't really want any app to do that, especially not flat packs. So we need to have something in between there. So. Um, a new thing. There are some proposals for that, so maybe uh, this is something that will be done for next versions. As I said, camera with Pipewire, two big things really. I don't know if these are going to be done in one uh, Fedora cycle. Uh, there's some other things here, NetJack, um, that I'm working on. So for sharing real-time audio in a pro audio setting, very low latency, much lower than what uh, the existing protocols do. Uh, and yeah, eventually also AVB, which is standard for streaming audio. That would be cool too, but yeah, has not been successful yet. Yeah, so uh, this is pretty much uh, what I had to say. Um, I'm going to see here if uh, we have some questions. I think we have some time for questions, no? Yeah, uh, we have time to do a couple of questions. Yeah, I see I see a whole bunch of Q&A. So, yeah, I will start with that. Uh, any plans where there's quirky emulated audio devices? Yeah, out of the box. Um, uh, no, not exactly any concrete plans, no. Um, so it's a matter of yeah, quirky devices. I think one of the things with the quirky devices, it's not only emulated devices, but other devices as well. Um, they, we need to use a different ALSA API to actually make these somewhat work better. Um, the timer base doesn't really work that well because the timings that these devices do, they're not very accurate. So there's another way of using also with callbacks that might work better. So, yeah, so that is possibly a plan. I think this is actually what Pulse Audio does when it runs in a VM. It uses it, it doesn't use the timer uh, based scheduling anymore. Yeah. Um, the Spark have feature for improving playback of lossless compression audio formats such as FLAC. Not exactly flack, no. So there's pass through of AAC, AAC, uh, AC3 and DTS. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, there is a bug report open for LE audio support, but that also involves kernel changes and bluesy changes. Uh, actually, good news the codec that is used for LE audio is already supported so that problem is already solved uh, now it's just waiting for the other bits to fall into place and then hopefully it all falls into place uh yeah documentation ongoing ongoing process of course uh yeah Uh, uh, with Piper Bluetooth, how much or how little of the Bluetooth stack do we need to go with it? Blueman Applet or such? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Bluesy, you need to run, but then there's also stuff 
for configuring uh, the, for pairing devices and stuff like that. So uh, DBus API, as far as I know. So uh, you know, Control Center does that. I guess other things work as well. Uh, yeah, Easy Effects does not use filter chains. <clears throat> uh, it actually uses separate filters. Uh, which is also an option they can use. Uh, does it make sense for them to use filter change? May filter ch chains? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Uh, filter chains were after were made after Easy Effects uh, made their design. So uh, yeah. Uh, playback protocol switching. So this is probably for uh, Bluetooth. Um, yeah, when something requests a microphone and it is tagged as uh, a phone application, we have some quirks to tag specific apps as phone applications, and it tries to access the Bluetooth microphone, then we will switch profiles and actually activate that microphone. Yeah, so plans for show battery level on Bluetooth devices. So this is implemented, uh, but as far as I know, it's behind an experimental flag in Bluesy. So I think we just need to turn on the experimental flag in Bluesy to have that work uh, out of the box. So maybe something for next Fedora. <clears throat> 